Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. Going to have a look at the way next week, 10 days for today's video. This takes us to around the 14th of uh, January. Now, we've got some concerns about next week's weather. Uh, we have this split, we ha we've had this split uh, in the models between the uh, GFS and the East End in terms of potentially bringing in a very cold easterly wind next week. Uh, so we did the video yesterday where we said it's a case of let battle commence because the East End of was really going for this easterly, but GFS less convinced about it. What's happened overnight is that the East End of has shifted more towards a GFS solution. So I wouldn't totally rule out the chance of a bitterly cold easterly wind next week, but the chances of it are lowering at the moment. However, high pressure will remain sort of uh, close to Scandinavia through next week. And so we may get further developments, even if we don't get the uh, the EC next week, we might get further developments cropping up at relatively short notice uh, through to the middle part of January. So I'll show you what's going on in a second. We're going to begin, though, by having a look at the uh, free. So I've seen in America, so I've seen uh, this picture on Twitter. And uh, this is snow falling in Tallahassee, capital of uh, Florida. So you can see the palm trees uh, there, telling you that it's a pretty tropical sort of environment. But you can also see the flakes of snow falling onto those uh, palm trees. Quite incredible conditions over in Florida. The big freeze does continue for the east of the states. This is the uh, ensemble from the GFS model for Tallahassee. You can see why it's been cold enough for, uh, for snow, because the uh, minus temperature has gone down to minus 5 Celsius at 850 HPA. That's um, the average for Tallahassee at this time of year, that red line just there. Uh, so you can see how much colder than average they are in Florida at the moment. It's going to stay very cold for the next couple of days and then very gradually those temperatures are going to begin to pick back up. So by the middle of January, this period just here, we're going back close to uh, average in Florida. But really very cold conditions indeed. Uh, not just there, but across the eastern part of America. This is the ensemble for New York, New York City. Now, they're facing a very severe northeast blizzard in the next 24 hours. So, uh, the red line here, again, it's the um, up 30 year upper air temperature average. You can see that's where we are right now. So it is cold at the moment. But look how cold it's going to get over the next couple of days. You're going to see the temperatures go down to around minus 25 at 850 HPA in New York City. And that's going to mean that maximum temperatures in New York over the next two or three days probably won't get much above around minus 10, minus 11, minus 12. Extraordinarily cold conditions Uh in the east and the northeast of America. However, again, similar story to what we just saw with um, Tallahassee. We do find as we go through to the middle part of January, it looks like the freeze is going to relent. So we should see a relaxing of the cold next week. And very gradually, whilst there may be further cold snaps, very gradually it looks like the severe freeze should begin to uh, ease a little bit over in the uh, east and the northeast of the states uh, next week. This is what they're facing though in the next couple of days. So before things get worse, they are going to get um, before things get better, they are going to get uh, an awful lot worse. So we've got this area of low pressure uh, right now that's uh, down here in the uh, Atlantic Ocean, uh, sort of off the uh, coast of the Carolinas. And what we're going to find over the next few hours is that low pressure is going to run up the eastern seaboard. So that's the situation by midnight tonight, where the low pressure is just off the coast of uh, New York. Um, classic northeast of this, it's pulling down extremely cold air from Canada, where we've already got the cold air in place from the earlier freeze. And the low pressure provides the precipitation that's going to fall as snow. So a classic blizzard, northeast of blizzard here on the east side of America. You can see from the tightly packed ice bars, we're looking at severe gale force winds combined with uh, copious amounts of snow and severe cold. It really is going to be horrendous over on the eastern side of America in the uh, next day 
or so. There's the upper air temperature, so you can see the warm core that we've got this, with this area of low pressure has come up from sort of uh, the central uh, Atlantic, tropical Atlantic. Um, but look how cold it is across most parts of America. Really still very, very extremely cold here in this eastern, northeastern part of America. So as this warm air from the Atlantic tries to push in, engages with this extraordinarily cold air down from Canada, that's what gives us the blizzard and uh, the classic sort of northeaster type weather on that east coast of America. Uh, by the time you get through to midday tomorrow, that low pressure is moving up into Canada, uh, and then it's extremely cold with these northerly winds bringing down that exceptionally cold air. Uh, so we've got uh, the uh, 850 HPA temperatures, upper air temperatures, widely going down to sort of uh, minus 10, minus 15 here across many uh, central East parts of America, but up towards the north, we're going down to minus 20, minus 25, the 850 HPA, and that even extends out into the uh, east coast of America, into the Atlantic, as we saw with the ensemble uh, for New York. Out in the west, it has always been relatively mild during this incredible freeze that they've had over through central and eastern parts of America, and it remains so, uh, with the upper air temperatures looking really quite mild over in the eastern part, the west part, I should say, of uh, America. Uh, that takes us through to next week, then. This is Monday, and by then, the pattern is starting to change. We're beginning to draw up slightly less cold or milder air uh, from the south. So there we see the upper air temperatures really starting to lift up. By Monday, we're pushing those very extreme cold upper air temperatures back up into Canada, and uh, many northern and eastern parts of America are then facing a thaw. There will be a lot of snow and ice to thaw out, so I would assume that uh, there could be problems with flooding through the course of next week as all that snow and ice rapidly melts. As the upper air temperatures by the middle of next week, uh, most of the cold is up around the Canadian border in the very far north, uh, most parts of America looking significantly warmer by next week. I'm sure it'll be a welcome relief for uh, many of the people living in the States um, through the course of uh, next week that things will finally start to warm up and thaw out. Right, so coming back to uh, close to home, this is the GFS Temperature and Precipitation Ensemble next couple of weeks for Darlington. Someone's asked asking to have a look at Darlington. Uh, today, so the red line is the 30-year uh, upper air temperature average for Darlington at this time of year. Starting off very close to average. We've got colder weather coming up at the weekend, so it will be turning colder over the weekend, most definitely. Quite a bitter uh, wind is going to start to feed in from the continent as we get through uh, the weekend and into the start of uh, next week. However, through the course of next week, you find the temperature starting to stage a recovery then, although there is still a lot of scatter, a lot of uncertainty is coming through uh, with this. So uh, these are the warmer ensemble members up here. These are the colder ensemble members down there. I think the GFS ensembles have shifted a little bit, interestingly, towards the colder side of things through the course of next week. But at the same time, I'm going to show you the charts in a moment, the ECN GF sort of backed away from it. So still quite a confused picture through the course of next week. I suspect it'll be pretty chilly and probably relatively dry uh, through the early part of uh, next week anyway. But maybe no sign at the moment of uh, really freezing easterly winds arriving. For precipitation, we've got rainfall coming up over the next couple of days. Then we've got a drying trend through the course of weekend and into the start of next week. These are our surface temperatures at uh, Darlington. So we're starting off around there, relatively mild, really. Uh, but what we're going to find out is that over the next few days, those temperatures will be going colder. So into the weekend and the start of next week, we're struggling to get the temperature much above freezing. But then through the course of next week, we do find the temperatures beginning to lift up a little bit. That is disguising quite a lot of scatter, though. So again, we've got some ensemble members that are keeping temperature close to freezing through the course of next week. Other ensemble members are actually going quite a bit uh, milder. And again, as far as the rainfall spikes, so uh, we've got quite a bit of wet weather coming up in the next couple of days, then drier over weekend. And then into next week, we very gradually 
to start to increase those precipitation spikes, although not dramatically so. So I think there will be quite a bit of dry weather. Dry and fairly cold, I would think, sums it up for next week, although that is subject uh, to change. Temperature anomalies for the next week is going from the 4th to 12th of January. For the north and the west, we're coming out colder than average. Yet England and Wales was average to slightly uh, milder than average. Notice many, many parts of Europe continue to be really significantly warmer than average in the week ahead. Precipitation anomalies from the 4th to 12th of January, they're looking average to drier than average through the UK and Ireland. In America, cold, cold temperature anomalies continue in the east of the states, but these anomalies are gradually starting to relent, and this warm area out in the west is gradually starting day by day to progress further eastward. So slowly you're going to start to come out of the freezer next week in the north and the east of America. Many parts of the states coming out drier than average in the week ahead from the 4th to 12th of January. Here's a GFSM for Sunday, putting in these cold easterly winds. It is going to be a cold weekend. This could be providing wintry showers to southern and eastern parts of the country. Those cold easterly winds continue into Monday as well. Uh, GFS keeps that high pressure rooted over Scandinavia on Tuesday, although a slight change in the wind direction will start to bring up some slightly modified, less cold air from a more southerly part of the uh, continent. But essentially, the high pressure is still in over Scandinavia, so we're still in a blocked, relatively cold setup. Through to the middle part of next week, the Atlantic is gradually starting to encroach. This takes us to Thursday the 11th. Now, you'll notice even then, the high pressure is still there over Scandinavia. So the high pressure is still influencing the weather. These areas of low pressure are coming in from the Atlantic and really struggling to get in. The jet stream is doing something rather like that. So these areas of low pressure, as they come in, they're probably just going to bring light, showery outbreaks of rain. But it is possible they might do something a little bit more wintry than that. And essentially, that high pressure is still there over Scandinavia. So this is why it's so complicated. It's not as though we're seeing the Atlantic steamrollering in and sort of flattening off this Scandinavian high and killing it off. The Scandinavian high is still there to our northeast, albeit it's not producing anything particularly cold up to this point, which is a week away. But it's still there, it's still menacing, and it could easily sort of um, inflate the centre of the pressure and begin to pull some very cold air our way. You certainly wouldn't rule that possibility out. As long as that high pressure stays over Scandinavia, things remain very interesting. Now, as we go towards the extended range of the uh, GFS, we do find the Atlantic coming in rather more quickly then. So this is taking us up to day 10, which is Sunday the 14th of January. And by then, that high pressure is uh, sort of collapsing down towards the Black Sea. And we're going back into this unsettled Atlantic-driven stuff. Albeit, even then, it's still quite cold because the air, as it has done throughout most of this winter so far, with areas of low pressure, is coming from the northern part of the Atlantic. So although the high pressure of Scandinavia is collapsing and moving in that direction, we certainly don't go mild. And uh, actually, as these areas of low pressure start to come in, they probably bring a risk of uh, wintry showers uh, with them. But I wouldn't necessarily take that too seriously. I think up to, certainly up to day uh, eight, which is a week away, we still have that high pressure over Scandinavia. And whilst it's not doing anything desperately cold up to that point, let's just show you the upper air temperatures that we've got in a week's time. So nothing desperately cold is going on up to that point. But as long as that high pressure remains rooted over Scandinavia, there's always the chance that the winds could go properly easterly and begin to bring in some very cold air. You can see that there is a large mass of cold air up there, way to the northeast, back into Russia and to the north of Scandinavia. But it would only take this high pressure over Scandinavia to inflate and uh, really turn the winds into the east, and you very quickly start to push this really cold air from Russia and uh, sort of the north to the north of Scandinavia. You start to push that uh, quickly down into Europe. So don't be ruling anything out at this point. 
We go through to the ECWF. That's how uh, ECM is looking for Sunday. It will be a cold weekend with those East wins. That continues into the start of next week as well. Now, remember, yesterday, the ECM was producing proper easterly, long fetch easterly wins. Isn't doing that today. So this is Wednesday. High pressure is still in over Scandinavia, but we've got more of an Atlantic influence. So these areas of low pressure and their weather are coming in off the Atlantic up against this high pressure. Uh, and... We just don't quite get that easy flow. But, I mean, the South things look um, in a week's time. And, again, the high pressure is there over Scandinavia. It's at 1,030 millibars. Um, so, it's having an influence. We've got the jet stream going in that direction, kind of splitting uh, like that. We've got a weather front through here. Again, you wouldn't rule out the chance that that weather front might be doing something a little bit wintry. We won't know until closer uh, to the time. Uh, and then we go up towards day 10, when we do start to see that high pressure beginning to slip back in towards the east of Europe. These areas of low pressure start coming from off the Atlantic. Again, it's not mild. These low pressures are in this sort of position, primarily because of the blocking feature we've got over Scandinavia, but also because, again, we find the jet stream is on this southerly track. As I've spoken about this a lot in the videos, the jet stream is constantly this winter trying to go to our south so these weather fronts as they're coming in from off the atlantic they've got quite cold air ahead of them they've got quite cold air behind them and they may actually be producing at least the risk of sleet or snow as these fronts come in from off the atlantic so although perhaps we're not going to get this long fetch easily it looked like we would get uh if we took the e yes seriously yesterday Though might, we might not get that, it does still look very, very interesting, I think, as we're going into the middle part of January. And there is still more wintry potential here, most definitely. And with high pressure over Scandinavia, again, don't be ruling out the chance that those proper easy winds could come back at some point in the near future. Finally, the GM, the GM will just whistle through this. The Canadian model cold at weekend is out of its week. That high pressure gradually trying to be forced back, but... Here we are at uh, a week away, first of the 11th. Again, the high pressure is over Scandinavia. Looks looks like it's trying to develop into a proper Scandinavian high at 1,035 millibars. All that would need to happen is for this low pressure to go in that direction, the high pressure to inflate, and you start to pull the winds in from the east. So we do have the cold pool behind the back of the high, around the back of the high, we've got the cold pool waiting if we can get wind into the east. We go up to day 10, and that's how we look. It uh, looks very blocked. Uh, we've still got high pressure somewhere close to Scandinavia. We've got this low pressure to ourselves. Again, we're not doing anything particularly cold at this point with the upper air temperatures. I'll just show you those. So those are the upper air temperatures. Um, despite the block setup, the upper air temperatures are relatively mild, actually, although the surface temperatures will probably be cold because it's a continental uh, flow. It's a really, really complicated weather pattern, this, and it's causing all sorts of problems, not only for the models, but for myself to try to decipher it all. Let's talk about what we know. Certainly up to the start of next week, it's going to be cold. So you're going to have a cold weekend. We're going to have it cold into the start of next week. And then where it goes beyond that into the rest of next week, it looks ever so sketchy this morning. But I think... We've obviously lost those long fetch easterly winds that the ECMWF and the GEM were sort of hinting at uh, yesterday's showing. So they've moved more towards the GFS, but at the same time, the GFS has probably moved a little bit towards the ECM. So we may, in fact, finish up with a blend of all of uh, all of this and meet somewhere in the middle. And I suspect it will be quite cold through next week, probably a fair amount of dry weather. Probably quite a lot of night frost, but probably some showery bursts of rain or sleet and snow at times. And as long as that high pressure is up over Scandinavia, there will continue to be an ongoing risk. No more than that. There will continue to be an ongoing risk. But at any point, it could sort of snap and lock in to a really cold weather pattern. So it certainly remains far from a sort of mild zonal type uh, situation. Um, it does remain quite an interesting outlook, to say the least. And there's 
bound to be more twists and turns with this, I think, over the coming few days. Right, I hope you're able to follow it all. It's a very, very complicated situation at the moment. We may go through the GFS Ensembles tonight, do a GFS Ensembles watch, just to try and work out um, whether there's any cold, easterly uh, GFS Ensemble members. I suspect there will be a few, uh, and we may do that for you this evening. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.